This video is a review of the EcoRoad EC6 electric scooter. I'm going to unbox, assemble, go over the controls, test ride, and review the e-scooter. The EC6 has a 350 watt front hub motor with a max speed of 19 miles per hour or 30 kilometers per hour. Thumb throttle, 36 volt, 5.2 amp hour battery with a range of up to 15 miles or 24 kilometers. Front E-ABS and rear disc brakes. 8.5 inch pneumatic tires, headlight, taillight, and weighs 25 pounds or 11 kilograms and can support up to 220 pounds or 26 kilograms. Additional specs can be found in the description section below. This is the box that it came in. The only difference between the red and black one is the sticker on the side of the box. Inside the box we have the scooter itself. We have the instruction manual. There is the charger. There is also a bag inside this bag. There's two spare inner tubes. There's also an Allen key, four screws, and there's also an extension for the tire inflator. In the structure manual, it says the first thing to do is to put the handlebar onto the stem, but I feel like it's gonna be easier if we actually connect this. Lifting the stem up, we can pull this lever to lock it, and in order to unlock it, you can't just pull it that way. There's a tab that you need to push up here and then you can pull the lever forward in order to pull it down and then this folds. Coming up here, making sure that this is connected, we're gonna feed this cable into the tube and then we'll put the handlebar in place. Make sure that the holes for the screws line up. We'll take our bag of screws, there's four of them. We'll start threading them in. There's two on the left and there's two on the right. Then we can take our Allen key and start screwing them in, going clockwise, and that's it. If you want, you can put the bag on the front. There's Velcro, you would put it over the tube, feed it through this buckle, and then Velcro it on the other side. Same with the one on the bottom. And then same on the top. There's a headlight right here, so I don't want to block it. I personally think this looks a little silly, so I'm just gonna show you how to put it on, but I'll probably leave it off. The charging port is down here. There's a piece of silicone that covers the plug. I'm going to plug this end in here and then I'll plug this one into the wall and this light should turn red when it's fully charged it should turn green. We can take a quick look at the manual. This is the front page. You can pause at any time to see this in detail. Table of contents, general information, safety warnings, parts and features, Assembling the handlebar, using the latch, folding it, unfolding, tire inflation, it says to pump it to 40 PSI, charging, make sure the scooter is turned off before charging. I tried charging it with the power on and when I plugged it in, it powered the display off. Here's some usage information. Maintenance, specifications, and then the button functions. For the button functions, I'm going to go over these in the functions section. Just briefly going over it to power on, you press and hold the power for three seconds. If you short press the power button, it turns on and off the headlight. If you short press the power button twice, it switches the gears from 
one to three. If you press the power button three times, it changes the units from miles per hour to kilometers per hour. If you short press it four times, it turns cruise control on and off, and then it doesn't show it here, but I tried it. If you press the power button five times, then it enables zero start. It means you don't have to kick the scooter and go more than two miles per hour. Before using the throttle, you can use the throttle immediately at a start. Six short presses of the power button onward didn't do anything. To fold the scooter, you would push this tab up on the left side of the lever, pull this lever forward, and then this can slide down. There's this bracket right here. You want it to meet this location right here. And then it clicks on and you can carry the entire scooter. To take it off, you'd pull this lever outwards and then fold this back up. Looking at the handlebar, there's two signal indicators on the left and right side. There's a single brake lever that controls the electric ABS in the front and then the disc brake in the rear. This is a bell. These are the turn signals. This is a display power button. This is the latch to hold the rear fender when you fold the bike and then the thumb throttle. In order to turn this on, you would press and hold the power button for three seconds. Looking at the display, we have the current speed in miles per hour. We have the gear and the battery level. If we press the power button once, it turns the headlight and tail light on. If we press it again, it turns it off. If we press it twice, it goes from pedestrian mode to eco mode. It goes to D mode and then sport mode. If we press it twice again, it goes back to this pedestrian mode. And since zero start isn't enabled, the throttle does not work at the moment. You need to go more than two miles per hour. So I'll just lift the front tire off and then turn it. And it provides four miles per hour. In eco mode, we're getting 10 miles per hour. In D mode, we're getting 16 miles per hour. And sport mode, we're getting 19 miles per hour. If we press it three times, it changes from miles per hour to kilometers per hour. I want to keep it in miles per hour. By default, the cruise control is on. If you press it four times, it turns it off. That one beep means it disabled it. In order to re-enable it, press it four times again and you hear two beeps. And then if you press this five times, it enables zero start. So you heard the two beeps. That means that I can use the thumb throttle without having to go more than two miles per hour. And in order to disable it, you would press it five times again and I heard one beep. So if I try using the throttle, nothing happens. If I press this six times, nothing happens. And then if I try pressing it seven times, nothing happens. Let me just show you the signals. If I press this, you can hear it beeping. There's also light right here. And then there's the light over here. In order to power this off, we press and hold the power button for three seconds. And that's it. Taking a look at the tail light, when it's in the pedestrian walk mode, this light is always flashing. And if I press the brake lever, it flashes faster. Let me change to the eco mode. The light turns off. If I press the brake lever, the light flashes. And this is the same for eco, D, and S mode. If I go back to pedestrian, it starts flashing again. If I turn the headlight on, this light is solid. And if I press the brake lever, it flashes. So this is the same for eco, D, and S mode. 
So for the signals, the only light that lights up are on the handlebar. There's no indicators back here. It looks like there's lenses here, but nothing actually lights up. I'm gonna test the acceleration and max speed in each of the gears. There's three of them, the Eco, D, and S. For the pedestrian mode, it just goes four miles per hour. And it might be a little difficult to see, so I'll just read the speed vocally. We're in Eco mode and we're at zero miles per hour. I have zero start enabled, so I can use the throttle to accelerate without having to kick off. And we hit 10 miles per hour and it's holding that steadily and cruise control activated because I held the accelerator for more than five seconds. Let's come to a stop. Going to the D mode. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And we maxed out at 16 miles per hour. We're in S mode. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and we hit 19 miles per hour. I'm going to test the brakes. I'm going to hit the max speed of 19 miles per hour and then slam on the brakes. There's an E-ABS brake in the front and a disc brake in the rear. We're at 19 miles per hour at this first cone. And you can see a skid mark there, the rear tire locked up. Our front tire is before the third cone. That's about 12 feet. For cruise control, you have to hold a speed steady for five seconds and then you will hear a beep. And I heard the beep. I let go of the throttle and it's still going. And then to get out of it, you can press the brake lever. This is a semi-incline and it's still getting 19 miles per hour. So even though it's 350 watts, it feels a little more powerful than the 500 watt that I reviewed a few weeks ago. It's rated for 15 degree hills and most scooters in this price range with a 350 or 500 watt motor will only be able to take 15 degree hills. Anything higher, it will struggle. The steering is very quick and predictable. There is no suspension. But there are pneumatic tires, meaning they're air-filled, and they seem to absorb a decent amount of impact better than solid-filled tires. The only issue is that if you get a puncture, you're going to have to take the entire wheel off to change the tube. Moving on to the review of the EcoRoad EC6. The things I like about this scooter are that it has these turn signals built in. A lot of scooters in this price range do not have them built in. So it's nice to have this, especially if you're riding in the dark. I did notice that the rear doesn't light up. It would have been nice if this lit up too for the turn signals. I also like that it just works. There's four different modes, the pedestrian, eco, D, and S mode. Each limits your max speed with S going up to 19 miles per hour, and it gets there fairly quickly. It's nice that it folds and it only weighs about 25 pounds. It has a 350 watt motor. A lot of scooters around this price range are very similar, but what's nice about this one is that it's going to be on sale for $260 on Amazon. For the latest pricing, check out the description section below. I feel like that's very reasonably priced. Some scooters that are $400 don't feel as nice as this one. I like that it comes in different colors. So far, I've only seen the red and black one and the brakes work. There's a front E-ABS brake and a rear disc brake. It also has cruise control. You can enable zero start, which I showed earlier in this video. It has a range of 12 to 15 miles. Most scooters and e-bikes that I've reviewed in real life situations where you're accelerating and braking, you're likely to get half of that range. So you can expect around six to eight miles. In terms of suggestions, it would have been nice if they had turn signals back here. When you use the turn signals in the front, nothing happens here. These are just for decoration. It also does not have suspension, but because these are pneumatic air-filled tires, 
they do absorb some of the impact, which is better than solid fill tires, but there is a chance of them getting punctured. If they do get punctured, you might be able to apply sealant or you're gonna to have to take the entire wheel and tire off to replace the tube. Other than that, I don't really have anything bad to say about this. Please like this video if you found it helpful. Feel free to leave questions or comments in the comment section below. And if you wanna see more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you guys for watching and take care.